Hey guys, Matt Kentucky Rangstein back with another episode of our 44 mag gel block test series. And this is the one that a lot of you guys have been waiting on. This is the 240 grain XTP. And XTP bullets across the, the variety of weights that this is available to have been a workhorse in, in 44 mag for as long as I can remember loading 44 mag and kind of evidenced by the box here. This is one of the older Hornady boxes. Uh, I have some new boxes of 240 grain and I have some older boxes of 240 grain and decided to pull out the vintage box for this one. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's turn around here and take a quick look at the loading, then we'll get out to the range and we'll be back in just a bit. All right, accurate number nine powder, CCI number 350 large rifle Magnum primers, and of course the Hornady 240 grain XTP box. Now, whether it's the old box or the new box, it's still part number 44200. That has not changed. And here's a look at the loading. And uh, just like with the 357 mag bullets from earlier, the, from the cantilever to the nose of this bullet, there is no difference between the 180, the 200, the 240, or the 300 grain bullets. And uh, it's always how much of this bullet is down in the case. So. All right, guys, let's get out to the range and see how this does, and then we'll be back for the results. Hey, guys, Matt Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 44 Mag Ballistic Gel Block Test, and today we're looking at the 240 grain Hornady XTP bullet. Now, 240 grain is a staple weight uh, for 44 Mag, and the XTP bullet from Hornady has been a workhorse in this caliber for years and years, so let's, uh, let's see what this thing does in the gel block. So today we'll be testing out of the 20 inch Rossi R92, the nine and a half inch Ruger Super Red Hawk, the four inch Taurus Tracker, and the two and three quarter inch Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum. Velocities will be getting hauled in by the Garmin Zero C1 Pro. And let's see what we do here. Velocity is 1,716 foot per second. And I'm pretty sure we got the catch on this. Let's go look at it. All right, guys. So uh, this gel block's got a, uh, we did the 265 grain FTX test just previous to this one. So there's a lot of uh, messed up wound track on the back side of this. So we're gonna be shooting more to this side of the block with these XTPs and uh, hopefully we'll be able to tell the difference. So wound track for the XTP and the 20 inch rifle starts right here. And we get that signature XTP expansion with those six little charges of lead coming off. And we just move right on back through here. Uh, got a few chunks uh, of lead back here in the uh, 12 and a half to 14 and a half inch mark. And then we go right into the second block. We've got more lead fragments, more lead fragments. And looks like our final resting spot is down here at 25 inches. And this is a, a nice, nice mushroom on this thing. So uh, really, really good expansion and really good penetration with the 20 inch rifle in this 240 grain. All right, guys, next up is the uh, 240 grain Hornady XTP in the Ruger Super Red Hawk. velocity on that one. I'm pretty sure we got the catch. Let's put one of these in the back stock to get our velocity. All right. Velocity of 1541.3 foot per second. Now, I don't know if I had it on camera or not, but it threw up a heck of a dust mud cloud back there. All right, guys, so wound track for the Super Red Hawk starts right here, and uh, we got that signature XTP expansion with these lead fragments coming off, and we track right on down through here into the second block, and final resting spot is 
right here appears to be at about 25 inches. Let's see if I can get zoomed in here on this. It's pretty cloudy. So, uh, all right, guys, I originally had put these up here as a catch block. Uh, more interested in seeing the wound track uh, in the first 16 inches. And uh, these are some of my older blocks, and this is going to allow me to shoot uh, more bullets per setting before I have to go back and melt these things down. So, all right, let's go back and try the uh, four inch tracker. All right, next up is the uh, Taurus tracker, the M44 model with the uh, 240 grain Hornady XTP bullet. Velocity of 1274.6. Let's go check out the catch. All right, wound track on this one starts right here. And uh, again, we've got the lead shards coming off here from the, the typical XTP expansion. This bullet takes a nice curve down really quickly. Got a few lead shards along the way here, and looks like we've got a total penetration out here at 28 inches. And this thing just did kiss uh, the plate, still plate on the table here, right as it was stopping. So, but that's still some nice mushroom on this bullet, and uh, some nice performance out of a four inch barrel actually, a three inch barrel. All right, guys, next up is the uh, Smith and Wesson. Uh, 44 combat mag and uh, I'm going to get over here and get down a little bit lower for this shot to be able to pick a better spot in the gel block. I've got just enough of a down angle on this that if I if I hit the the gel block too low on the front, the bullets are angling down hitting the table. So I'm hoping by starting with a lower shooting position, I can get an up angle on it and uh, be able to hit a cleaner spot in the gel block. If we can just get the Garmin to pick it up. All right, we did not get the Garmin to pick it up. And I'm not sure how good my shot placement was. Let's try another one of these in the backstop for velocity. Well, 16.2, and this thing has definitely got some recoil on it. Um, this Hogue Tamer hand grip that I put on here the other day makes a world of difference on this and uh, just uh, really helps soak up uh, some of that recoil. You could, you could see the recoil, but it wasn't, didn't feel near as bad as it actually is with this Hogue grip on. All right, let's go check out the catch. And wound track for this round comes right on down through here. And looks like we are stopped out here at about 28 and a half inches. And we had about 29 inches of penetration before the gel block sucked it back in there. And this is just, just past and above the, uh, the four inch TARS tracker. And there you can see Actually, you can see all four rounds here in this shot. All right, guys, get these dug out and have a better look at them when we get back to the shop. All right, guys, so it's hard to imagine getting any better results than what we've got right here. So the uh, the 20 inch, the nine and a half, uh, the four inch, and the two and three quarter inch, and then the unfired round over here. And honestly, this is just absolutely amazing performance. Every one of these opened up and mushroomed. And the greater the velocity, the more measuring we got. But even down to that two and three quarter inch combat magnum, this thing just absolutely um, did an amazing job as, as far as opening up and expansion and that, that mushroom nose on it. So uh, 
you know, this is a, this is the workhorse and right here is why it is the workhorse. All right, guys, I don't think there was any surprises here at all. So the 240 grain Hornady XTP bull is just a, just an amazing and, and one of the staple bullets in uh, in 44 Magnum. Uh, velocities on this thing range from 1,716 foot per second down to 1,216.2 feet per second out of the two and three quarter inch uh, Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum. So 500 foot of velocity spread between those two bullets. And the pictures are coming up here in a minute and so is the spreadsheet. But take a look at that. For 500 foot of velocity, how well that two and three quarter inch combat magnum opened up with this bullet. Uh, penetration was 25 inches with the rifle, 29 inches with the, with the two and three quarter combat magnum. So we had our deepest penetration with the shortest barrel. But of course, you know, the rifle dumped a lot of its energy up front and it was had a lot more mushrooming on the head. So that, that accounts for part of that. Expansion was 7.743 for the rifle, 0.66 for the uh, two and three quarter inch combat magnum. And the, the Super Red Hawk and the, and the four inch Taurus did, they did fine jobs as well. I mean, they were just in between those two, but uh, so just a really good performance out of this bullet across the entire velocity range that we tested these at. And, uh, you know, this is why XTP is XTP. Uh, stay tuned. We're, we'll have, the, we also have the 180 grain, the 200 grain and the 300 grain review still to come up. But, you know, everybody's been asking about this one. I want to go ahead and get this one put out there first, and then we'll go back and catch the other ones here over the next several days. So, all right, guys. If you got any questions, let's hear those. Uh, I'm sure, and I've already been getting a lot of feedback, a lot of firsthand experience with these XTP bullets, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of nice stories about where and for how many years and, and how much game that you guys have taken with this bullet, and it's just uh, just an amazing uh, testament to the bullet and how well this thing operates. All right, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. Feel free to hit the share and copy paste my links out for any of my videos or my playlist. You can actually go to the playlist and share the entire playlist out as well as individual videos. Uh, would appreciate if you guys could do that. That, that helps the page out tremendously. Um, and as always, guys, thanks for watching again. And Matt from Kentucky Range Time, we'll catch you on the next one.